In today's video, we're checking out the AC300 by Bluetti and the expansion B300 batteries that it comes with. And over the last month, I've been running this system every single day. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about my experience and what I think about the unit. So first off, this is a modular solar power system. This unit has a solar charge controller, has the inverter, and it has the DC outputs. But this unit does not have a battery. You can't even turn it on. There is no internal battery at all. So to turn it on, you need to connect it to the expansion batteries with these expansion cables. And I complained about these cables in my AC200 Max video, but I think that these were designed for this system. This system is much larger, and it actually looks a lot better when these are connected on the side. And these are some large expansion batteries, guys. They have lithium iron phosphate cells, so they're pretty darn heavy. But each one can store 3,072 watt hours. What's interesting is each B300 has its own state of charge indicator, it has a 12 volt output, and it has USB ports, and it has a main on and off switch. And having these expansion batteries enables this main unit to have a larger inverter circuit and a larger solar charge controller. On this main unit, we have a 3000 watt inverter. And get this, this thing can handle 2400 watts of solar input. It has two separate MPPTs and each one can handle 1200 watts. And on previous Blue Eddy models, you had to use this massive power supply to charge it. On this one, it has an integrated AC charger and you just plug in a cable and you can charge at a max rate of 3000 watts. And personally, I've always hated these wall chargers. This thing is just massive and it gets really hot. So it's nice that they actually finally put it into the unit. You can also charge the system with a 12 volt or a 24 volt alternator and you can charge it with an EV power station. I have not tested that out and I'm probably never going to, but that's pretty interesting. I think the EcoFlow Delta Pro also has that. So in my opinion, this is the first serious size system that Blue Eddy has ever made. I like their past models, but this is just at a whole new level. This is up there with like a Titan or the large EcoFlow Delta Pro. And I think they redesigned it because everything that I complained about in the AC200 Max, they seemingly have fixed on this model. So first off with the AC200 Max, if you drain all the batteries, it will only charge up the main battery when solar starts to recharge it. On this system, it charges up both batteries instantly. Next with the AC200 Max, I complained that with the expansion batteries, you could easily tip it over and that was not safe. But these batteries fit into each other and they're harder to move. They also have a wider base of support. And the design of the case is quite different, so I think they had somebody design this from the ground up. It seems very different than their past models. Now let's actually put it together and let me show you how to use it. On the side of the main unit and the batteries, this is where you connect everything together. First on the top, we have the AC charge input. So you can connect 30 amps with this cable right here. And right below that input, we have the DC solar input. So you connect this cable into this hole right here, and you can connect two solar panel arrays with these MC4 adapters. And these are separate inputs, but you can actually parallel them if you change the settings on the screen. And personally, I think that's somewhat useless. I really wanna know why they would parallel two separate arrays. Personally, I would have them separate and I would use both separate MPPTs. And below that is a communication interface. This is if you use the power box for creating 240 volts with two of these main units. And on this side, we have the battery input connection. So you need to connect the batteries right here. So you just have to slide it in and then you slide this forward to lock it. And this connects to the expansion batteries, but check this out. This one actually has two ports. This enables you to connect more batteries to this single expansion battery. On the AC200 Max, there was only one port. And this expansion connection allows you to connect even more batteries. So you can actually put a maximum of four batteries connected to the single main unit. And this is the same port as the other one, so just plug it in. And both connections need to be locked for the main unit it to turn on. And then you turn on the battery by pressing the on button and then this automatically turns on and it shows 11% state of charge for battery number three. So that's what it's connected to right now. But you can connect four batteries like I mentioned a second ago. And the interface is very similar to older models, but there's some new settings that they have added, such as this setting right here. So we have a max grid input current, and you can actually set this to whatever you want. So safety glitch disclaimer, yes. And then you have to get the password. So I actually had to email them. And for me, the password is 159873. And then you press okay. 
You can either choose pre-selected current values or you can do user defined. So anything between 10 and 30 amps. So let's do 12 amps, press OK, and that's it. Press back and we're good to go. And personally, I like this a lot. So depending on what supply you have and how much current you can pull through it, you can change this number to exactly what you want. It also has a Wi-Fi so you can connect it to the app. This app is surprisingly good. I've never had a single issue with it. And you do not need to make an account, finally. I hate when they do that. So AC300, click it. And this app is always connected very quickly. So you have the PV input, the grid input, DC output, and AC output. And you can actually turn the AC on and off with Wi-Fi. So if you're in an RV and you have this thing in a closet or something, you can turn it on and off remotely. Same with the DC output. Then you can change some of the settings over here. And under this menu, you have working mode. So if you want to use it as an uninterruptible power supply under time control or PV control or customized, you can do it here. And you can also change the cycling bandwidth. So if you want to charge it up to 90% and then down to 10%, you can do so right here. And on this model, you have a 12 volt output and a 24 volt output. And at 10 amps, that's 240 watts. Now let's talk about the inverter output receptacles. So we have standard receptacles and then we have an RV plug. And whether you're using this one or this one, the max output continuous is 3000 watts. And one thing that I think they should have done is labeled this as 25 amps max because 30 times 120 is 3,600. But this inverter can only output 3,000 watts. So yeah, you're never gonna get 30 amps continuous from this plug. If it was rated for 25 amps, then you would get 3,000 watts. So I think they should have changed this to 25. Now if I connect the second cable, and then I press the lock button, and then I press the main battery icon, you'll notice that both batteries are connected. And look at how it works. I plugged it in and it just connected. I didn't have to turn anything on or off, it just knows and it connects it automatically. I hate those covers, I always take them off. And I almost forgot to mention the DC inputs on the battery itself. So you can charge this battery on its own. The bottom input is for a wall adapter and personally I would never use this in a million years. But on the top we have a 12 to 60 volt DC, 10 amp maximum DC input with an XT90 connector. And this enables you to charge with an alternator or a small solar panel array. Or you could charge with a 24 or a 48 volt supply or from a battery. Um, this is currently and limited, so yeah, very useful connector. Now let's talk about how I've tested this model on my own. So instead of doing tests in a single day, I don't think that's very reliable for finding problems. So lately I've been stress testing these units. And on this one, I used it to charge my main solar power system, and then I used the main solar power system to charge this. So essentially I created a loop so I could pass hundreds of kilowatt hours through this inverter circuit. And I had not a single issue. Everything worked flawlessly. But their inverter circuits have been very good for quite a long time now and I haven't had any hangups like I have with other companies' models. Next, I connected 1200 watt array to one of the inputs and yeah, every morning it charged up both batteries. I never had a single issue like I did with the AC200 Max. Next, I actually used these DC outputs to charge up my camera's batteries, my microphones, my phone. Um, I actually use this thing every single day now. And I haven't had a single issue with this model. Um, I haven't had the screen lock up, I haven't had anything go wrong on this model at all. And in my opinion, I know this one costs more than the AC200 Max, but I think you should get this over that one. The AC200 and the AC200 Max are good, but when you try this, like the capabilities for the price is just out of this world. I would rather have just one unit in one battery over an AC200 Max any day. You can expand this one more. This thing is lighter. And because this main unit doesn't have a battery, if there is a warranty issue, you could ship this back a lot easier than shipping back an AC200. And you can upgrade the firmware with Wi-Fi. So if they have any software updates, you can finally do it with your phone. And the system is more versatile. We have 12 and 24 volt inputs. You can charge the 
batteries with its own solar array without the silly adapter because on the other model they have a, a little adapter with all of these wires um, and then there's no adapter for the AC input so everything that I've complained about they seemingly have fixed on this model also this can do 240 volts I don't have that box yet and I'd have to have two of these units and I don't think many people are going to actually use that but if you want to use the system to run like a cabin's panel you could easily do so and with two of these main units you could do 4800 watts of solar input so that's some serious power but overall i would have to say that this is my favorite blue eddy product it is the first one that i can consider a serious solar power system and it's expandable and the functionality is amazing now let's talk about the downsides or anything that i found that i think that they should improve so first, if this is to be considered a serious solar power system for off-grid use, there should be some form of autonomy for cycling with the inverter. So if I'm powering some loads and it goes to zero, when it charges back up again, it should have an option in the settings to turn the inverter back on at either a certain voltage or a certain state of charge. This does not have that, and all of my large, serious solar power systems do have that option. And that would be very useful if you have like a cabin system. Let's say it's rainy for like one or two weeks straight, and then this thing discharges down to zero. Now let's imagine you were not at the cabin to turn it back on again. And let's say you have security cameras or like a SIM card router router connected to this unit. If it shuts down and it can't turn the inverter on by itself, that's a huge downside. And with MPP and grow watt inverters in large solar power systems, you should always be able to have that option. And this does not have that option. So I think that they should add it. Um, I know that they could probably do it through a firmware update through the app. So I hope that they add that. Next critique is the max input voltage is 150 volts DC. This should be 250 to 450 volts now. Now that you have the proper connector and you have MC4 adapters, and this is a seriously sized system, I think that you should increase the voltage limit so you could put more panels in series. With this limited voltage input, you're gonna have to put a bunch of panels in parallel with branch adapters. So yeah, I think the input voltage should be higher on this size system. Next critique is this has the same interface as the older models and sometimes it locks up for no reason. I have not had a single issue with this model, but I'm scared to recommend anything that uses the same interface as something that has had problems in the past. And personally, I wish they just had a small switch right here and a small switch right here to turn the inverter and the DC outputs on or off. If this touchscreen fails, your whole system is down. But these touchscreens are very reliable. I mean, think about a cell phone. Those things last for years and years without issue. But this is a solar power system. And if you're trying to use this for 10 or 20 years, in my opinion, having a touchscreen is somewhat of a liability. But you can control this with the Wi-Fi app. So even if this screen failed, it should still work. Now what I want to know is who designed this thing because I think they got a new guy or something. Um, everything worked perfectly with the expansion and how this locks together is exactly what I wanted in the AC200 Max. So personally, I think that they had a new guy design it from the ground up because this one's pretty impressive. This is an actual solar power system. And that's pretty much it for this review. Um, it was actually a good review. I tried to be as critical as I could and I really hope that they upgrade the things that I made critiques about. And if you do buy this and you have a problem, please let me know. Um, post it on the comment section of this video or post it on our forum and I will see it. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video and thank you so much for watching. Bye.